So today, I'm going to show you how to make and decorate these steampunk horns for your hat. Okay, so these are the plastic horns. Now these came on um, a piece of elastic, which obviously was supposed to go around your head so that they rested on your forehead and stuck up like that. So, but I've removed that because obviously I want to attach them to the goggles. And of course the steampunk goggles or the welding goggles, well, you can pick these up on eBay for um, next to nothing really. I think um, I bought about five or six pairs all in one go and I paid something like two pound a pair for these things. Um, I know you can get them from different places, um, party shops, fancy dress shops, that kind of stuff, and they're a bit more expensive, but you know, getting them from eBay, you're getting them directly from China, so obviously they are going to be a bit cheaper. Um, but I'm not going to take these to pieces just yet now. I am going to be attaching the horns directly to the glass and sit them directly in like that, but I need to treat the horns first. And um, these are the ones that do have detachable um, lenses. You can get them where they are fixed and non-detachable. Um, so it does work better if you've got a pair that do detach. You can do it straight on the ones that don't, but I always find the ones that do detach are a bit better. So I'll start off doing the one. So this is how it comes in the packet. So it's painted obviously with black paint, um, and red paint um, and it's just painted over the top of black plastic so all I've got is just a piece of fine grit sandpaper I'm not going to try and remove all of the red I'm just going to take a little bit off the top just to give it a bit of a key for the gesso that I'm going to use in a moment Just gonna quick, I'm gonna just whip round really quickly. Just kind of create a bit of texture for my next layer of paint to get stuck onto. And you can see it's coming off because it's coming off all of my hands. We need to employ some babby wipes. I can open the packet. I'm sure I've already pre-opened this packet once. Here we go. There we go. And then I'm just going to go over, just remove that red powder as much as I can. Now because these um, plastic horns are made and manufactured in China, just be careful because the Chinese aren't as um, careful and aren't as bothered about using lead paint as we are. So that's one done and now I'll go ahead and do the second, I'm just drying it off now. I'll go and do the other one and then I'll be right back. Okay, so these have now been sanded down and then cleaned and then dried again. So I've removed most of the flaking paint, which is perfect. So now I want to give them a primer coat. So you can use the spray and um, plastic primer that you can buy from the hardware stores, um, but I don't have any. So I'm going to use a good old fashioned black gesso. So this is from Indigo Blue. Uh, other black gessos are available. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over the whole thing with the black gesso. Now this will not stop it from getting scratched. It's, it's just a primer coat only for the next layer that's going to go on top. 
but because it's going on plastic it will still scratch which is why I said if you really want to make sure that it doesn't then you will need to use a permanent kind of um, plastic primer to do this either a spray one or a paint on one but I find just for kind of casual hobby use because I only wear these every so often because this is my second pair of horns that I've done the first pair I made um, at one of the shows that I attended with Ian um, somebody offered to buy them and made me an offer that was too good to refuse so I sold them <laughs> with the thought that I could always make another pair um, little did I know at that time that these horns are very difficult to get hold of you can get hold of very similar ones but it was this particular um, style of horn that I wanted and these are more difficult to find online than the other types so it took me a while to find them everywhere that I tried was either out of stock or they were discontinued or, or whatever it's more difficult to find stuff like this when it's out of season it may be cheaper if it's out of season because obviously prices are reflected by need and by demand so if you're looking for a pair of devil horns and it's not Halloween you're more likely to find them cheaper than if it is coming up to Halloween when everybody wants them okay so that's the first coat of gesso there and I've just realized I've painted myself into a corner because I need my heat gun which is on the floor which I normally pick up with my left hand but I can't because I've got that resting on it <laughs> so I'm just going to quickly give them a dry which doesn't take long at all and then give them a second coat so I'll do the same on both of the horns and then I'll meet you back again in a few minutes okay so both of the horns have now been painted in black gesso they've had two coats obviously I've not done that bit because that's where they're going to get glued on and it's all now nice and dry so now to put one to one side what I'm going to do is I've pulled out um, a little tub of metallic paint now this is Brass Monkey from Indigo Blue so this is a brass colour and you're not going to need a lot because we're going to do some dry brushing so really really dry and then all I'm going to do is just flick over the top which is going to reveal that texture Just like that and I'm going to work my way all the way around I'm keeping the brush fairly flat and I'm just going to pick up the brass paint now you could do this with gold if you wanted to or even do it with copper but to start off with I'm going to go over and do it with the brass I think that looks fabulous and this is another one of those reasons why I didn't want to um, go too hard with that sandpaper because I didn't want to smooth it all off and lose all that texture that you can see coming up on those horns now it's 
it's like a magical process. And of course, you don't necessarily just have to use acrylic paint for this. You could use those fabulous gilding waxes, the alchemy waxes, and do exactly the same thing. But for me, using the paint is just quicker. And when we get so far towards the top, I'm just going to just fade it out a little bit. And then if you just want to go back in and add a couple more extra layers, it really, really doesn't take long at all to kind of get the effect that you want. Here we go. I'm hoping that's focusing on that. Now I'll have a go at doing the other one. Repeat the same process again. Okay, so both of the horns now have that brass kind of dusting on them, but when you actually look at the colour of the goggles, put them both together, one's more coppery than it is brassy. So what I want to do is just bring in some copper paint. This is Miss Moneypenny from Indigo Blue. And I'm just going to dry brush a little bit. This is a bit more thicker, isn't it? Take some of that copper. It's actually a bronze colour or rather than a copper colour. But just to just to kind of diffuse it a little bit, I'm going to add a little bit of that copper colour just towards the bottom and just blend it all the way around. Just to kind of help diffuse and blend it in a little. And then just fade it out again. So heavier on the bottom, then as I'm coming up, I'm going lighter. You can just see the difference just there. It's very subtle. So I'm hoping the camera's picking it up.
and then lighter and then darker. So heavier at the bottom and then lighter as we get round the edge. And then I'll do the same thing because you can see the difference now between the two. Difficult to see when they're on their own, but once they're side by side, it's kind of easier to see. Lighter and then heavier strokes. Lighter, then heavier strokes. Always heavier towards the bottom and then go lighter as you come up. There we go. So now, when you hold that to it, it's not quite such a big difference. So we're going to leave those to dry for a little while. I'll have a clean up and a tidy up, and then it'll be time to attach. Okay, so I've already done the first one. So I'll show you how I'm going to do the second one. So I've removed the screw cap and I've removed the lenses from inside because we don't want those. So then all I'm going to do is just feed that all the way through and then just push it into that top ring until you get to the section where the elastic used to go. And it will fit quite snugly like so and then just screw the horns all the way around until it won't go any further and don't worry if your horns not lined up because what you're able to do is just very gently twist your horn round so that it then will sit exactly where you want it to sit on your hat and you can adjust them as and when you need them. Now if you wanted to you could then go back in and add a bead of glue all the way around the inside just to make sure that they're not going to move but once you do that they're fixed in space or fixed in place and you won't be able to make little adjustments to them but I think they're solid and sturdy enough and don't really need to have the glue because I like that flexibility of being able to move the position of the horns as well. So after much dry brushing and much painting there they are in situ on my little top hat. Perfect steampunk addition to the costume. So I hope you've enjoyed watching me create those steampunk horns. Let's just hope nobody offers to buy these ones. <laughs> if you did enjoy that, please remember to give it a thumbs up, share the video with your friends, and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. That's all for me for now. I'll see you all again very soon. Bye for now. Oh, no jokes about being horny.
I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you, these videos would not be possible. Thank you.